What's up, Bleach fans? It's your host with the most, Groover, as always, bringing you guys the latest episode review for Bleach, the Thousand Year Blood War Arc, episode 15, entitled Peace from Shadows. And right out of the gate, we do, we're already in to volume 62. So within two episodes, we've already ran right through volume 61, and we're starting off now. Granted, we're only a few pages into volume 62, but we are still into volume 62 at the end of this episode so that's pretty cool plus we got a really cool filler scene that i actually really like the idea that the quincy's weren't just doing it for bravado and stuff like that taking the bonkai stealing the bonkai and stuff like that uh because with hashwalt uh talking with them basically on the same table that uh you know uh eisen was using to talk to all as a spot about the looks of it but um he's talking to a lot of his fellow sternritter there and basically saying listen Here's the reason we're going to use Bonkai is against them because they bring up an argument. I forget which Sternrider, but they're all involved. They basically go, why would we bother? You know, like, why don't we just kill them with our own power? We're strong enough, you know, blah, blah, blah. With stolen Bonkai, we don't need to use Bonkai. He goes, ah, but here's the thing. We've let them be for a few days. The thing is, is that during those those hours and days, what they're going to do is they're going to try. You think they're just going to bow out? You think they're gonna just hit a depression and they're not even gonna join the battle? No, they are still formidable. They are still captain class soul reapers and what's gonna happen is they're gonna to try to find some loophole, whether it's keto, whether it's something, they're gonna find a way to combat us without using their bonkai. They're not gonna rely on their bonkai and that makes them semi-dangerous. But the other thing is, is morale is that we are going to specifically, and we see this in the episode, and it was done in the manga, they're specifically looking and targeting the captains without Bonkai, the ones that they stole, so that they can put them in the ground. So to showcase that not only once you come up against us, we will steal your Bonkai, and even the captains that had time and prep to maybe prepare against and fight without their Bonkai are thrown into the ground are dust in the wind we will break their morale now this scene is not in the manga as far as i know but it's a huge it's a it's a military tactic kill the heart of the enemy first then the, you don't even need to hit the body because if the morale is gone it's just it's, it's mow down time right so it's actually a really cool, it just opens up the episode with that, and I really like that scene. I thought it was very vital and important to show that the Quincy's aren't just going into this all cocky and arrogant. To a degree they are, of course, because they've been prepping in the shadows for a thousand years, which is once again stated here in this episode. But the reason, the way they're doing it and the how they're doing it is all based in military tactics, which makes total sense. Take the heart of the enemy first. Um, so yeah, I really like that filler scene. Uh, they switch around a few things. One change, actually, one change which is more Kubo's fault than the anime's fault, and another change that I just don't like, and I don't know why they're not doing it, uh, is, and maybe there's something in the anime, because once again, anime tries to, manga gets away with a lot more gore. Manga gets away with a lot more, uh, things that should be R-rated or whatever like that than uh, its anime counterpart, so maybe that's the reason. If that's the case, can't really blame the anime for that. But, uh, and, it, and it does showcase a different side of, of Omida, but yeah, either way, we'll, we'll talk about that one first, then we'll talk about the one that's not really the anime's fault, but it's more Kubo's fault, um, is the fact that when, uh, when BG9 goes to attack, he's looking for Soifon and attacks Omida and all that stuff, uh, we see the scene with the, with the little sister and all that stuff and blah, 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 and it's, it's similarly done. But then, we have a different take on it here in the anime, because in the manga, you know, he's sitting back there going, uh, you know, he's grabbed it, like, we, we have a much different scene, it's sort of cut different, oh, mine is shown to actually be able to, maybe not uh, fight him off indefinitely, but actually grabs a spike and manages to, uh, you know, like BG-9, like, he's resisting, he's still a lieutenant, even if he's a pompous ass, he's still... A lieutenant and he's like yeah no 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 you know and stuff like that so he's resisting he's like I'm not gonna tell you where my captain is I don't even know where she is but you know like all that stuff 
the thing is, in the manga, it showcased that the little sister there, uh, Makino, Mai, Mai, Maikino, I, I forget her name, but uh, she's actually, BG9 goes, oh, well then, how about this? Some motivation sort of idea, and boom, stabbed the sister. It's, it's up on high and, and has her stabbed, right? So it's like, whoa, that's pretty dark. And then he, and then Almighty gets super pissed off. He's like, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it was actually kind of good character development. Uh, for his character to be like, oh, he's actually going to, maybe this is where he's going to show off Bankai, because he actually takes his Zompok toe and slams BG-9 right in the side of the head. It's like, you let her down right now, and he's all being logical. Well, if I do that, there's, see, there's this giant hole in her chest, then maybe that's not such a great idea. She'll bleed out. I, you know, I know my is just like rage mode right now. It was really well done in the manga. Then the same scene with Soifone happens in the anime. In the the difference is is that they still showcase him as a more caring individual and he cares about his sister and stuff like that uh but they showcase it as he's protecting her and she never actually gets hurt um i think i prefer the manga scene more than the anime scene but if the reason they had to do that was for the sole purpose of as, as we already talked about was censorship reasons they can't show a little girl being stabbed through the chest and bleeding out then if that's the case and they rework the scene uh, for that purpose, then it, it's it's a good change uh, and they did the best they could while not being able to show the full grimness of the material. Uh, I think they did a good change because they still show Omida being protecting, being, uh, you know, similar lines and that kind of idea. Though they never actually see him, like, do any damage to BG-9. I wish they sh would have shown that because that looked awesome. It was just like, I didn't know where, just wham, big spike ball of a Zombato, just wham, to the side of the face. And it was like, alright, even if that didn't hurt, it was satisfying to see it happen. Um, so yeah, the only other problem that I had, uh, the second thing was uh, Matsumoto. Uh, Rongiku has a bit of an issue, and it's more so the art style in Thousand Year Blood War Arc, because I went through uh, the chapters that uh, this anime takes place with, and uh, it wasn't the anime's fault. At first, I was like, well, why is the anime doing this? And then I looked back and realized that for some reason, Kubo drew Rongiku a lot younger looking, facial expression wise, uh, in the run of Thousand Year Blood War Arc. She seemed much more adult. Her eyes were uh, much more narrow. They usually had a bit of eyeliner, a bit of eyelash on the bottom and stuff. And in the anime, you can clearly tell. If you look at a shot from the anime here in Thousand Year Blood War Arc in this fight, and you compare it to a Soul Society or a, or a uh, fake Katakura Town shot of Rangiku, you, you'd think that that was her little sister. You know, she looks way less uh, mature and looks way less uh, adult. She looks like she's basically uh, from when Ishin was her captain. That's what she looks like. She looks way younger because, and it's all to do with the eyes. Not, nothing else is wrong. Her haircut and all that stuff and everything was fine, but uh, it's the eyes. The eyes are big and round like Orihime's or something like that, right? They're not, they're not the more matured uh, adult eyes. And I don't know why the change was. I don't know why Kubo decided to do that. Um, because it really does feel like, uh, who's this like super half the age version of Yurongiku right now uh, going and helping out Hitsugaya. So uh, at first I was going to complain about the anime part of that, but after watching the episode, I caught up with the uh, manga and I realized, oh, well that was more, they're following Kubo's art. Kubo's art just for some reason did, did that weird thing. So anyways, um, the rest of the episode, as I said, uh, it was fine. I really liked the aesthetic. Uh, Mayuri looked amazing in his suit. It, it all follows the manga pretty pretty closely, so I won't really go through it scene by scene. One thing I did like, though, Soyphone's just BG9, just like she's standing her ground, and I'm not a big Soyphone fan at all, but BG9, you know, shoots a spike out at her, and he she doesn't just grab it, she grabs it and friggin' spins him around and just uses it as like a tail to a wham and throws him into the building. She's like, I'm gonna attack you, crab. Nope. Foom. And just in one motion, just slam. It was really badass. It was really cool. Uh, the choreography for these fights has been really cool. The animation's been crisp. It's been nice. I like the color aesthetic where everything's 
dark with that ice world, but it's also, it's a black sky with this red hue to it and all that stuff. It's looking really good. Um, we don't get some of the reaction shots that we got in the manga, but that's fine. We do see Uke Take, uh, of course, in, in the shrine, way past the Serate and stuff like that. We know what's going on there. Um, and Shunsui does have his conversation with, uh, uh, Hashwalt and that kind of idea and then now has a conversation about her super keto and all that stuff Hashwalt brings up a good point like he did in the manga like hey, um Maybe not the best idea to it's you know, you're focused on trying to perfect this uh, Maybe it would have been better to like like quantity over quality Might have been your better option because you have dying captains out there now the end of the episode relies and a lot of the people like asking and the fact that Askin versus Mayuri, I still got Mayuri on that one. Askin is an interesting character, but a lot of people love him, and I, I think it's... I don't know if it's design or his attitude. I was never the biggest fan. I, I don't really have a big love for any of the Stern Ritters specifically. None of them really got to me, and I was like, that's the best Stern Ritter, you know what I mean? None of them really uh, got to me in that way that I can really think of. Um... I mean, I like Basby, and I, and I don't mind Askin, I kind of like Askin, um, but it, just some people were like, oh yeah, one of my top five favorite characters, I'm like, okay, fine, you do you, but I, I didn't really get the love for Askin, but I'm sure a lot of people will uh, will appreciate this episode, because you get a lot of Askin, you get a lot of Mayuri, uh, that light suit looks awesome animated, that light suit looks exactly, I couldn't have thought of a better way to animate that myself. It was great. And the end of the episode, ending it on, adding the couple scenes from the beginning of Volume 62, but then adding on the scene uh, from, from the last volume or whatever, where, uh, I think it's in the last volume, yeah, I'm pretty sure, where uh, they end the episode on uh, Kisuke contacting. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, fact of the matter is, is that Kisuke contacts Mayuri and basically says, I got a way to get the Bankai's back. So, I'm like, all right, there's there's my favorite character coming in clutch being like, let's go. So, um, that's that's really cool. Uh, as I said, the episode was just straight fights. Way better episode than the last one. As I said, the last one just sort of felt like, all right, yeah, we got to catch everybody up to speed and let's move on. And I still hold to that, even though it's following the manga verbatim. Uh, it, it was not a great uh, starting block for the episode. Someone in the comments, also, I forget who, so shout out to you, um, of my last review, did say uh, what would have worked better if this had been, like, uh, the first episode had been, like, an hour long. Now, I'll go on a limb and say, like, 45 minutes even, and extended, like, an episode and a half length uh, would have been would have been fine. A 50-minute episode opening for the, your second act probably would have worked a lot better. Uh, than what we got but either way this episode had as I said very little flaws other than the the sort of the two that I kind of mentioned but both of them can be explained away one it was Kubo doing that stuff and the uh, second one being of course probably a rating problem probably just a censorship thing it is what it is anyways we're losing daylight fast of course the moment I hit record all of a sudden I have bright light the whole time and then when I start recording it's like dark 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 you know <laughs> The, the sun is setting every time I decide to record. So, anyways, that's the end of that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Episode 15 was great. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I think episode 16 is going to be even better. I really do. But the animation, uh, especially the soy phone versus uh, BG9 animation, was crisp as hell. I thought that was uh, pretty stellar. And, uh, anyways, yeah. So, episode 16, really looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. And like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time, guys. Sayonara.